Hello, welcome to Putting Work TV. We've enjoyed watching your journey as an artist slash creator in the New England scene. Our focus here is allowing our guests to tell their story front and center without judgment or opinion. So let's dive straight the fuck in. What's your name? What do you do? And who are you? What up? My name's Derek, aka America. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm a social media uh, content creator. That's what they call those. And I'm just now diving in the podcast. Okay, so that's a lot. Yeah, we'll that's just call it a creator. At the end of the <laughs> multi talented. Yeah. So, how did it all begin, Derek? Um, well, it really began in school. I was the class clown. That's where it started. That's okay. the first thing. That's always starting in the class. You know I mean? Yeah, it starts in class. A lot of suspensions behind this shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it started as the class clown. Social media um, became part of everyday life. It started on social media. And then we kept graduating. Okay, so once you graduated from the class clown, yep. what is the name for the next stage? When you start just making everybody laugh that you run into somehow, somewhere. Um, I wouldn't, so it's a weird stage. For me, it was like the class clown and then you know like people around, like say you go to camp or whatever, you don't make them laugh. People in your everyday life. Um, after that, kind of jumped from like the school shit to the internet for me. It wasn't no really no in between. It was like from this to that. You know, my family annoyed at me in school, and then they was like, oh, he might could do some shit. Like, he in his room doing this on his phone, and it's coming out like this. Mm. So it was a sport around you, and you wanted to touch the waters with the people. Yeah, like, I always felt like I can make people laugh in class, but that shit, at the end of the day, it fucked you up. Because now you can Now you get in class, trouble. Now your grades is bad and shit. So, like, the internet was a place where the work was respected mm. and where it could grow. Okay. Mm. I, I have a feeling you're a very articulate motherfucker. We gonna get into it. So, yeah, let's do it. what was what was it like growing up? Where you're from, and where are you from? Um, I'm from Roxbury. Um, I lived in Jamaica Plain until I was about nine years old. Then I moved to Roxbury, Carbon Street, to be exact. Um, it was cool where I grew up. It was like any other part of Boston, you know. Gangs around the area. It was. I'm not gonna say like we was broke. We was middle class, but like I didn't have everything I wanted. I always knew I wanted to work real hard in life to get more than what I had, but I ain't never missed no meals or nothing, so I grew up fine. Um, it was like regular in the city set. Okay, and how did music become an equation, or well, not music, how did comedy become an equation in your life? Like, you say that you always used to make people in class laugh, but how does that translate to like, yo, I want this to be my everyday life, like to the point where being a comedian not only is embedded in who I am, but is literally what's paying the bills every single day. Got you. So it's funny you said music at first, because I did. I wanted to be a rapper. Like, I, always, <laughs> I would look up to like 50 Cent and shit, um, Lil Wayne. Like I used to love him. Like you feel me? I used to want to be like them. I grew up. They are very influential in my life, like from the way I would dress or try to talk back then. Similar with how Lil Durk is now to all these niggas. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be a rapper. It wasn't working, but I was always like funny. I can make somebody laugh. Whether I was like going through some or happy, like it was just second nature to make somebody laugh. It's like a nigga that dance. You feel me? He could dance in the shower, dance in the kitchen, walk into the bus, he gonna mm. dance. So it was like I was always joking. And it was like I love this shit. Like it's, I feel like one of the most beautiful things is watching somebody smile or laugh. Like. That shit make me happy, you know? <laughs> like when you're talking to a girl and you see all her teeth, she laughing, eyes closed, shit like that, that shit fired me. That most definitely, bro. And I think I think why making people laugh is so important, it's so respectable, is because a smile and a laugh, a laugh is when you let everything go. Yeah. You don't have any facades, you're not thinking about life, there is no intrusive thoughts, you're not holding frame, you're not concealing, it's your purest form of expression of yeah. joy. I feel that, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like everybody deserves to laugh. I feel like the world's a better place when people's laugh. Yo, I, I think, I think, I think. I don't really like crying, day. you feel me? I yeah. don't really like crying, I love to see people laugh. Whether that person's the toughest nigga in the world or a baby, like a smile is just a beautiful thing, you know? My thing is, how much respect did that get you when you could go from making the tough guy laugh, right? Making the quiet kid, you know, stomach boil over, you know, and, and making the girl show all her teeth when she when she doesn't really want to show her face. Or making even the teacher laugh and like you more in class. How much respect did that get? I feel like it gives you a lot of respect and not even in no like, not in a tough guy type of way, but like it's a pure form of respect. It's like... 
it's almost a form of vulnerability. Like, say you're the toughest nigga in the world. He don't never laugh. He don't never, you know, he just walk around like this all day. When you come around and he laugh, it's like, it shows you everybody's human. Like, everybody could be vulnerable. And then on the flip side, you got somebody that could be sad or depressed. When you make them laugh, it make you feel good. It's like, like the shit healing almost. Damn, so bro. Like, Damn, I'm feel, I'm feeling some healing from the last myself, yeah, bro. No you feel me? So the question is, what do you try to give people when you laugh? What are you specifically targeting? Um, I don't really know how to. I don't know if I'm like. I don't really know how to answer. I feel like I'm targeting like I don't even know what to call it. Like your soul, your laugh box. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just feel like laughing. Like I said, it's healing. It's giving somebody a good time. Like I'm taking your mind off of whatever you're going through at the moment, and we're meeting and like in in this laugh together you know like i don't know how to answer that's a good question <laughs> and okay so let me make let me make it a little easier i'm gonna ask you a different question i think you'll be able to give me a lot of detail on this question right here bet. so what's the process of a joke how does a joke come about when somebody says something is there a metaphor is there allegories is there two pictures in your head and you find words to formulate it okay. is there things that you remember that flash through your head or does it come is it quick wit it just comes off your lip you have a mouthpiece and secondly would you learn most from getting better at jokes all right so this is a good question um several so there's several different type of jokes there's jokes where it could be you say something and i have a quick response off of what you said i could build a joke um it could be two instances in my life that created a joke. My favorite jokes come from my pain, to be honest. Um, so self-deprecating humor. Yeah, I love it. And I love the dark humor a lot. Like, there was time I was just talking to my girlfriend yesterday. It was a time I got cheated on in the past. And I feel like my best jokes come from that situation. Only because it hurt so much at the time. Can like, you explain that story, please? Yeah, basically, um, I was with a girl. Um, we was living together. I came home. It was a nigga in the bed, right, with the girl. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of shit. Everybody know me know I go to bed at 9 a.m. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> so I see the nigga, um, I see the girl. Um, if you know me, you know I carry pistols sometimes or whatever. But um, I ain't really want to do nothing to the nigga. I laid down with him in bed. He um, left. I woke up the next morning and then, you know, I washed my hands with the situation. <laughs> but, like, the situation hurt, you feel me? Because I was fucking with shorty. Mm. And it hurt real bad then. But now it's like I laugh at this shit. Like, mm. I see the nigga now. It's like, it's whatever, you feel me? Okay, and what, what did you learn the most from getting better at jokes? Like, how do jokes progress? Um, you get better with your time, and you know how to relate to somebody. You know how to hit home. I can read a room also when I'm joking, you know? Some rooms, a joke might not work, and it might work in other rooms. But I feel like I learn how to relate to people better. And that way I can angle my jokes to make them hit home or make somebody feel it even more. So what are you looking for when you're reading a room to see what jokes work and what won't, what will hit and what won't hit? All right, depending so on the people around. I'm gonna judge the room. Um, if we're in Roxbury, like say I walk into a room in Roxbury, what are the people wearing? What are the people, what are they drinking? You feel me? Is my crowd mostly women? If it's mostly women, I should relax with women jokes. You feel me? I might have to talk about niggas in that. But um, <laughs> like, yeah, I watch the room. Are people broke in this room? Are they rich? People that's going through it financially don't want to hear about money on the stage, you know? So I might tap into a time where I ain't have no money. You feel me? Make them feel um, like we relate to each other. Mm. Like, yeah, I used to reuse condoms sometimes. You feel me? Like, shit like that. It might make somebody that's struggling like, oh, shit, I'm not struggling as much as he was. Mm. You feel me? And they might feel like, like they can relate. Damn, I think that I think I think your process of reading a room was damn near psychological because now it's not even just about comedy and making somebody laugh anymore. Now you're healing them in a way to see what jokes will hit to get that that reaction. Yeah, and I was gonna say it has a lot to do with the internet. I feel like a lot of days people block out insecurities or act like their life is flawless. I think one of the things I do that a lot of people to open up to me is I'll talk about my flaws. I'll talk about my flaws before I talk about anybody else's. So it's like, oh, they heard me talk about myself for five minutes. If I talk about them for 30 seconds, it's like, it's love. They know it's not out of spite. They know it's like we almost family right now. You feel me? Like, so I don't feel like there'd be any hard feelings when you start off like that. So that means you're front and center with your imperfections, which yeah. allows people to actually be real. Hell so yeah. what motivates you the most? Is it that? Is it people actually being able to be vulnerable with you and show you like, yo, I'm not human too. Like, I'm not perfect too. And you showed me that 
that's okay to be that way. Yeah, I know, so I know I'm far from perfect. Like, I know like if perfect's there, I'm, I'm outside. You feel me? Like I'm far from perfect, and I try to express that like on stage. Um, and I want other people to be comfortable with it. Like I feel like so many people put facades up just for social media. Like I don't know. I just don't feel it. So I try to. I try to put out what I want to see. Like it's okay to show your flaws. It's okay not to be perfect. We could work on that shit. You feel me? Most definitely, bro. And we could still have a happy life whether we're not the Instagram model or the Instagram get money nigga. You know? You don't gotta still be, be good. Yeah, you don't gotta be top dog in the way that social media wants you to be. Yeah, you could be top dog in real life. A lot of niggas with followers have no following in real life. If you know what I mean, yeah. like, like it's. Not all is cracked up to me. So, what do you wish you would have known before you started? Should somebody have told you, yo, Derek, pulled you aside? Hey, bro, you know, like, you're not going to always get <clears throat> everybody to laugh. You can go into a room and make a joke and everybody looks at you crazy. Like, what are the, what's the things about being a comedian you wish you would have known? Mm, that somebody could have informed you about? Something I wish I would have known. You know? Like, maybe not, don't be political, these people will persecute you. Like, just little shit. Nah, so... If you could say three things, specifically. Three things, I would say consistency. I should have been more consistent. Um, I would have said start earlier. I would have started a long time ago. I'm on stage now, and there's 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds that come out. It's like, damn, nigga, like, you could have been did this. So I would have started earlier, and... Fuck what everybody thinks. There's a lot of times I criticize my work because it's not funny enough to me. And then I say there's times I post a skit, everybody loves it. I hate it, but everybody loves it. So in a way, I'm not doing this for me, so stop criticizing my shit so much. There's somebody out there who's having a bad day and it might hit them in that spot where they needed to be hit. And you feel me? My job's done. So I would say those would be my three lessons for sure. And does that ever spill into your personal life? Like being comedian, how does your personal life and, and your creative, you know, jokes and the way you set them up, the way you deliver them, how you speak, who your character is, when does your personal life and c being a comedian interfere? I don't feel like they interfere with each other. I live like a pretty basic like life. So I don't feel like they ever like, you know, like, I don't feel like that's ever an issue. I feel like my personal life does fuel my comedy life though. I feel like whenever I go through something or I learn something, I try to form a joke around it, whether it's good or bad. But as far as like, like yeah, I don't know. I don't really feel like they interfere too much. Mm. So you have very good balance of your life, like the comedian stuff. And I think, I don't like to separate it because it, it's a part of who you are. Yeah, I feel like it becomes like one it at becomes, some point, you know? exactly, like It becomes who you are, so it's not really any separating. But there could be a time where you just see like, damn, like, as a personal life too. Like, there's things that I do that are outside of what I'm aiming to achieve by being a comedian. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what do you enjoy the most about being a comedian? What do I enjoy? Um, My... My ability not to be stuck on things, my ability to be to find humor out of pretty much everything. Like, I could probably be dying and I'll find like a joke in that shit or I'll find it funny. I feel like a lot of people around me is, say my phone cracks, I'll laugh about it. Like, I'll make a joke, like, damn, no, like, my camera look like I'm on an Android right now. Whereas another person who phone crack and it's like they just go through the whole day just upset. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I find humor and things, I take shit lightly. Like, you don't take things personally, and that saves nah, you from a lot of trouble. I, I, I feel like that a lot. I just know life keeps going, like, you feel me? <laughs> so, what would you tell somebody who's looking to start their careers? Like, somebody who's scared to press that post button on that first video, that skit, the editing wasn't good, I don't look good in this video, this joke doesn't hit, my friends are gonna laugh at me. What do you tell them? And post who are it. looking to get to where you're at. I tell them post it. Fuck like fuck all that other shit. I watch Cardi B jump on the internet wild, you feel me? Raw. Um my big bro don't call me white girl. Jump on the internet. No bra on, you know, three nails on, one lash off. Like people love seeing you be you, be raw. It's very 
I don't even want to call it depressing, but it's hard like when you go on the internet and everybody is on, in their best shape. It's going to make you feel like you have to be that at all times. Like sometimes people like seeing you be yourself. It's being like not dressing up for the camera. Like, you know, give us the real you. You mm -hmm. feel me? Give us that baggy yeah, outfit yeah. you just came outside. Hell yeah. Make it fly. I just took that sweater off. I wore that to the uh, Museum TV interview two days ago. So I wanted to look different. You feel me? <laughs> like, I'm going to give you that. Like, I ain't ashamed of that shit. You feel me? Like, it is what it is. It is what it is. So what's the hardest, what's been the hardest part of your journey? Um, consistency, I would say. In what way? So I get yelled at all the time. You need to post more, post more. But the way my mind works, I can't make work that I feel like is quality mm. if I post once a day. Mm. And I know I said I, you should post more, but there's a fine line of, like, you don't want to burn yourself out. But you also want to, you know, make decent work. I don't like, I'm not a fast food person. I like shit that's marinated and mm. cooked to perfection. Shit like that. I think that's a great fucking analogy. You should have been a poet too. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you see yourself becoming in the next five years? Like, what? how far can you take this? And where do you want to take it? Um, sky's the limit. There's Dave Chappelle's, there's Kevin Hart's. Um, you can take this very far. You do the right things, talk to the right people, you know, network. And obviously, go hard with your craft, sky's the limit. So, I look at people like Dave Chappelle and shit like that. Like, they got this far without social media. We have social media now, so I really feel like any creator, whether you're a rapper or a chef, whatever you are, sky's the limit. So, we have a segment here that's called a put-in-work moment. A put-in-work moment could have been you walk into a room, you went to this party that was out of town. You walked in there, by the end of the night... 10, 15 girls knew your name. The, the whole crew there wanted to hang out with you. You got hella respect. They trying to tell you to come to the party. Like, what's the, what's the moment you just walk into a room, you dominated? What was a put in work moment for you that made you realize, yo, Derek Gaines, the comedian, can make anybody laugh, regardless of ethnicity, race, background, height, body size, gotcha. it don't matter. All right, so this moment was actually a put Roxbury in, a, a moment. A put in work moment. A, oh yeah, so this put in work moment brought to you by Derek Gaines. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was at Slade's. Um, this, this has two parts. So like one week I went to Slade's, I invited mad at my peoples up, you feel me? To go on stage, I bombed, I fucked up, it was ass, terrible, <laughs> you feel me? Um, a couple weeks later, I went back, you know, I had to get my money back. So I went up on stage, I got busy. Like, from start to finish, I had everybody laughing, going mm -hmm. crazy in there. Um, and that shit felt good, because Slades is a very tough crowd. Mm -hmm. um, There's people that's not my age, I had everybody laughing, from the security to the chefs, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I had it jumping in there, so I feel like that was my putting in work moment. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm one of them, you feel me? <laughs> like, I can do this. Like you said, nothing can stop you, no matter what. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so I felt bulletproof after that, <laughs> and I realized we was walking through the project. I said, "I'm not bulletproof." I'm not bulletproof. Yeah, it felt like it though, you know. <laughs> what's the um? What's the hardest somebody's ever made you laugh? Was it somebody outside of yourself, or like hell was yeah. it somebody you knew? And and what was it that made you laugh so hard? That moment, like where you just remember to for the for the rest of your life, like damn, like I never had laughed that hard. Damn. Um. It's a lot of nights. So I'll be with um, Demona a lot. She's a very funny person. She makes me laugh a lot. Um, yeah, it'd be times like, you know, them like 30 second laughs where you just, you feel me, could barely breathe type mm -hmm. shit. And I don't even know how she come up with this shit. It'd be like off the top of her head. So definitely, I can't tell you when exact time, but definitely a few times with her. <laughs> For sure. So, what would you consider? And you know, I know you said that you went back, you got your money back, and you beat the tough crowd. Oh yeah. So, what was the most substantial moment in your career? Something that you're proud of? That if somebody were to ask you what you do, you could relate them to this experience to show how far you've come. Um, I got something coming up that I feel like is gonna be that. I got a really big show, but um, as of today. Was something I would show them. Probably my Siamese twin skit. I feel like that one, that was what really broke the ice for me in a lot of places. It was something where I could showcase my brain for real and also my dark humor. And I feel like a lot of people like that. So that's probably my most, my best piece of work to this date that I would say. Okay. But I got something coming up that I think might top this. All right. <laughs> we go, we, we go. Gonna see. Yeah, keep your eyes out, people. 
Um, tell me, how much is it? Uh, how much of an advantage is it to be funny with women, and what does it help you with? Pussy, right? Yes. That's the answer. Um, yeah, that's what it help you get. I got a girlfriend, but okay, if I I'm did talking it, about in your yeah, younger years. In my younger years, yeah. Um, women love to laugh. I just told my home the other day. I'm like, yo, that tough guy shit's played out. And even if it do get you the bitch, once you go to jail, a funny nigga's gonna come get her. Mm. You feel me? And it's not gonna be funny no more. But yeah, um. <laughs> Bitches love to laugh. Shit, niggas love to laugh. It be niggas sometimes that invite a funny nigga somewhere just so you can, you know, loosen a woman up for him and shit. <laughs> but I feel like laughter's good. If you get pulled over by a cop and he laughing and not trying to search your car, laughter won. You feel me? If somebody's having a bad day, you make them laugh, laughter wins. If this girl shy over there and she bad and you make her laugh, that laughter gonna win. She's gonna keep talking to you. She trying to laugh. You feel me? <laughs> so I definitely feel like it helps. Um, people say women laugh out their opinions or whatever. So when did you realize that as a young kid? Um, I don't want to sound cocky, but I feel like in school people would cling to me. Like people would like, oh, what's he going to say or do next? And it was kind of clown activity because I was doing dumb shit sometimes. But it made people want to be around you or hear what you had to say. A lot of people gossip and gossip's cool, but people get tired of that shit. Like... Even on the internet, people get tired of blogs posting dumb shit sometimes. So laughter is like light. And it, like I said, people love to laugh, so they might cling to you just to laugh, you know? So They just want to be in your presence to be able to have the opportunity to laugh. For with sure. You. For sure. Damn, that's a, that's, a power, that's a power right there. Just like me. If I can hang around Dave Chappelle all day, sign me up. Where I, where I could do this at, you feel me? I think you'd learn a lot, too. Like, I think by the time you ended up leaving Dave Chappelle, your craft would be so much better because there was a video I saw of Kevin Hart on a podcast. I forgot who with, but he was saying how watching Dave Chappelle do a set right before he was prompted to do a set after him showed him the skill gap in between a goat and him yeah. and even though he's very much respected in the game he saw why Dave Chappelle is an icon in the business so what comedians to you are inspiring for sure um don't call me white girl that's bro she definitely teaches me a lot definitely inspires me and it's like you said I watch her talk for an hour and he's like damn nigga like how you like how you do this shit you ain't write this shit nothing like it was just there for you to give out. Um, I love Dave Chappelle. I love Patrice O'Neill. He's from Boston. Yo, Patrice O'Neill. I haven't heard that name. He's a legend. Yeah, I listen He's to a his legend. Shit. I listen to Elephant in the Room probably At once a week. Black Elephant. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. The way he would read a room or make you relate, piss everybody off, bring them back. I listen to his special probably once a week for real. Um, rest in peace to him. Rest in peace. But he's definitely somebody where it's like, I don't know, I probably listened to that special a hundred times and I'm in awe every time. Like, how he, you know, hit these pockets, how he keep the room going like this. That's amazing, bro. Oh, my brother. And he talked about up. himself. Mm -hmm. he diabetic. Like he said, he used to walk into a store and have to choose between vanilla Oreos or keeping his feet because he was diabetic. <laughs> so it's like, you feel me? He definitely, he's a goat. <laughs> um, you want to ask the question or you just want me to go? Yeah, keep going. All right, so I feel like New England's putting on right now. Like, we got um, Cousin Stiz been putting on, Bia, Millie's. Those are all people from New England. I feel like, and there's a couple other heavy hitters. Like, you know, I think C4, Najee and them is about to blow. And there's all the drill rappers are going crazy right now. So I feel like I feel like New England got it. I don't even think it'll take five years. I'll say like in the next one or two. So, thank you, Derek Gaines, for pulling up to Putting Work TV. No I can tell you from the moment I sat in this chair, I knew you was about to make me laugh just oh, from the shit, way you was, was talking. Eating. I was just trying <laughs> to go. <laughs> the way you be shit. saying, you feel me? This, I'm like, yo, this dude is funny. So, thank you for coming to Putting Work TV, for putting this work in, bro. I appreciate no. you. And um, if you, you have any me. last words, you know, tell the people right now. Um, shit, no, I don't got none. <laughs> nah, you gotta tell them something. Um, eat your vegetables, don't drink soda, um, limit your screen time every day, work out. If you see, I've been working out every day mm. um, at the buffet. But um, yeah, <laughs> y'all stay strong, man. <laughs>